I was almost molested by a creep. This happened back in 2012. This is my first post, mind you. My dad used to have this friend we'll call him Larry. He used to have this creepy girlfriend, which we'll call Kate. And Kate was a chubby, short, 30-something-year-old female. Larry is 36 years old at the time. I can only remember a few things that were scary, and this is the scariest. My parents had to take a dog to the vet because she had a broken paw, so Kate volunteered to look after me and my siblings. One brother, one sister. So I was playing on my PlayStation 3 when Kate walks into my room, sits next to me, I'm very paranoid, and I start to feel very uncomfortable. Kate was staring at me, and I could feel something was not right. I quickly went to switch the PS3 off, then my parents came back, then Kate quickly ran out of my room. I didn't tell anyone because I didn't think much about it. Then around Christmas time, Kate invited us to her house for a Christmas party. I went to go to the bathroom. I locked the door so I could use the toilet privately. When I heard footsteps and coughing, Kate is a smoker. Then I quickly pissed, washed my hands, and left the bathroom. Kate just smiled a creepy grin. I ran into the backyard where I told my parents, and we quickly left after that. Then in 2013, my parents never saw Kate or Larry again because Larry went to prison. Maybe I'll tell you later, you know. But as it turns out, Larry's friend told my dad that Kate actually was caught breaking into a house and stealing stuff. And on her police record, it stated that she had molested Larry's nephew and also molested Larry's niece and a, a few other kids as well. I, I felt very lucky to not become another one of her victims. So Kate, if you are reading this, fuck you and I hope you rot in hell. The party creep. This is going to be long due to necessary contextual information. Last year was my senior year of college and I was living in a large house with eight other girls. One of the ladies had a winter birthday around Christmas and we decided to have a big bash for those events right after finals. The birthday girl was a bartender and invited us quite a few regulars as well. Fine with us, big parties are always a blast, right? My good friend who went to a different college was coming to the party before we both drove home together the next day. Also there with me was my boyfriend at the time. This was the first time they met, and they instantly became bros. The three of us were doing shots of my personal stash in my room as the festivities were slowly starting, and I locked my door when we went downstairs. All the bedrooms had deadbolts, and everyone always took care of the deadbolt their door and keep a key on them during events like this so our stuff doesn't get stolen. Flash forward to the party, it's getting crowded in our house, and I was dancing with some friends when my friend and boyfriend decided to go mess around with a machete behind my house, not out of the ordinary for those two. I was feeling pretty buzzed and being INFP decided to go up to my room and just shut my eyes for a little bit. I didn't lock the door behind me since the only reason I was locking it in the first place was the fear of my stuff being jacked while I was downstairs. When I heard it open, I assumed it was my boyfriend and friend finally out of branches to chop. I opened my eyes to see a guy coming into my room. I recognized him as being a regular at my roommate's bar as I had met him at her bar just the night before. The booze brought out the best in me at that moment and I immediately shouted, what the fuck are you doing in here? The guy responds by holding his hands up in the air and saying, whoa, whoa, calm, calm, calm down. But with no explanation whatsoever, I'm just pissed now. So I'm getting in his face and backing him towards the door saying, get the fuck out now. As he was backing out towards and out the door, he kept saying things like, I was just checking on you and relax, what's your problem? He's now out of my room and I lock my door behind me as I corral him down the steps into the main party where he disappears and my boyfriend and friend finally come back in. I tell them about what happened, but it's too crowded for me to point the guy out to him. Whatever, maybe he just saw us taking shots up here and didn't know I'd be in there guarding my fifth. Fast forward again, it's around 1.30 or 2 now, and the party is still going, though the crowd is thinning out a bit. My boyfriend and friend and I head up to my room to rip a few more shots before the night is over, and I'm shocked to see the same guy waiting outside my door. We all immediately confront him, which is easy with my boyfriend and friend being pretty big dudes. He keeps making up excuses and sticks with, I left my coat in there, I can't leave without my coat. I may have been drunk, but I know he did not have a coat when he came into my room. We tell him he needs to leave, and he continues to plead with us, so we eventually get him to go downstairs. After hanging out on the stairs for a while, we went back into my room. 
I was grabbing some stuff to take to my boyfriend's house so my friend would have my bed to sleep on for the night. As we are walking out of my bedroom door 3.30 a.m. or 4 at this point, we see someone go into one of my roommate's rooms down the hall. Since she was still downstairs partying, we immediately had a bad feeling. I sent my boyfriend and friend into her room where they found the guy halfway under her bed. He grabbed a black peacoat in her room claiming it was his and we chased him downstairs. At this point, we told all the other roommates and their significant others to keep a close eye on him and make sure he physically leaves before going to bed. My boyfriend and I left, but my friend said the guy didn't leave until the birthday girl's boyfriend physically kicked him out at 5.30 in the morning. He took the coats, so we thought maybe he really had put it up there and my roommate forgot to lock her door but lingered outside our house for 10 minutes or so before actually leaving. I, I, I don't know what his intentions were, but I will never forget that night. I recently spent time with a roommate who informed me that one girl had missing a peacoat since that party, and since she wasn't at the party when it happened, no one really connected to that. Weird. The Follower Story I'm your average paranoid 12 year old boy, but this experience definitely freaked me the fuck out, but I was lucky how it turned out to be honest. Now, some background information in which you need to know. I, I live in a small town with almost no crime. I live on a dead end, so sometimes there are cars parked down there for no friggin' reason sometimes. This happened about two weeks ago. On this particular day, we were getting ready to leave for a Christmas party at my family friend's house. My parents asked me to take out my small old chihuahua. I went out the side door that leads to the backyard. Suddenly, my dog started to bark loudly. Now, you can't see the dead end from the side of the house, so I assumed nothing was there. I thought that there may have been a deer or something in the backyard that just spooked her out. But when I looked in the backyard, nothing, nothing was there. I told my dog to shut up and went inside. About 15 minutes later, we proceeded to our car to leave. I saw nothing in the dead end. We backed out of our driveway and started, started down the road. Then out of nowhere, big circle lights appeared behind us from the dead end. It looked like a jeep was behind us. I thought nothing of this. Oh, well, maybe they were just taking a call or something and had to stop there. I thought in my head. But as we got to the end of my road, the jeep started to slow down as we turned. When we were halfway down the next road, my brother and I saw the same light slowly coming our way. That was my first red flag warning. I told my family, there may be a car following us. I also told them about the car slowing down as we got closer to the end of the road. My dad told me that if the driver was indeed in fact following us, then the getting slower part was to try to trick us into believing that the driver wasn't following us, but he said it would be okay and to not worry about it. We turned on to the next street, and then in the middle of that street, guess who was there? The Jeep. My heart sank. I had no idea why anyone would follow an innocent family on their way to just a Christmas party. They're still following us, I yelled to my family as I was looking back at it. My dad sped up the car, just enough to not get pulled over. We started to lose the car in that moment. We ended up on a choice of two roads. We chose the right one and went down the road. The jeep went on the left road, and I sighed in relief. I don't know what that person's intentions were. They could have been actually following us and gave up, or my paranoia just getting the best of me. I think that my dog was barking at the jeep. That was actually happening. She could have saved my life by barking at whatever was there anyways. Even though my dog is no longer here with us today, I really want to thank her, Lucy. <sighs> I miss her, and I will always continue to miss her, 